Hi, I am R. Indumati, as working as assistant professor in Department of Microbiology at KSA College of Arts and Science for Women. Today, my topic is about protein metabolism and urea cycle. Proteins. Proteins are the most abundant organic compounds and constraints have a major role of the body, dry weight of 10 to 12 kg. Perform a wide variety of structural and dynamic functions like enzymes, hormones, protein factors, receptors, etc. Proteins are nitrogen containing macromolecules consisting of L alpha amino acids as the repeating units. Of the 20 amino acids found in proteins, half can be synthesized by the body and half are supplied through diet. The proteins on degradation release individual amino acids. Each amino acid undergoes its own metabolism and performs specific functions. Some amino acids serve as a precursor for the synthesis of many biologically important compounds. Certain amino acids may directly act as a neurotransmitters, example glycine, aspartate, and glutamate. Next is the digestion of protein. The dietary protein are denatured on cooking and therefore more easily to digest by digestive enzymes. All these enzymes are hydrolysis in nature. Proteolytic enzymes are secreted as inactive zymones which are converted to their active form in the intestinal lumen. This would prevent auto digestion of the secretory alveoli. The proteolytic enzymes include two types, one is endopeptidase and the exopeptidase. The endopeptidase act as a peptide bond inside the protein molecule so that the protein becomes successfully smaller and smaller units. This group includes pepsin, trypsin, chemotrypsin and elastasase. Exopeptidase is a group act, act, act as a peptide bond only at the end region of the chain. This includes carboxylic peptidase acting on the peptide only at the carboxylic terminal end on the chain and amino peptidase which acts on the peptide bond only at the amino terminal end of the chain. Next is the general metabolism of amino acids. There are two types of metabolism one is the anabolic path pathway and the catabolic pathway. Next is the uh, transaminase. Transaminase is the exchange of amino group between amino acids and another keto acid forming a new alpha amino acid. The enzyme catalyzing the reaction as a group known as transaminase that is amino transferase. This enzyme have as pyridoxal phosphate as prosthetic The reaction is readily reversible. This is the reaction of transaminase. The alanine when combined with alpha glutarate it gives pyruvate plus glutamate. Next is the significance of transaminase. The first step of catabolism that is ammonia is removed and the rest of the amino acid is entering into catabolic pathway. Whereas the next is synthesis of non-essential amino acids by means of the transaminase. All non-essential -amino, non amino acids would be synthesis by the body from keto acids available for other source. Next is the clinical significance of transaminase. The main clinical significance is the aspirate amino transferase is the increased in myocardial infarction and alanine amino transferase in liver disease. Next is trans deaminase. It means transamination followed by oxidative deaminations. All amino acids are first transmitted to glutamate which is then finally deaminated. Glutamate dehydrogenase reaction is the final reaction which removes the amino group of the amino acids. Thus the two components of the reactions are physically far away by, but physiologically they are coupled. Hence the term trans deaminase. Deamination reaction is the removal of amino group from the amino acid as NH3 is deamination. Deamination results in the liberation of ammonia for easier synthesis. The carbon skeleton of the amino acids is converted to keto acid. Deamination may be either oxidative or non-oxidative. Only liver mitochondria contain glutamate dehydrogenase which deaminates glutamate to alpha ketoglutaramate and ammonia. This are Enzymes need Na D plus as cohesin. It also acts as an allosteric enzyme. It is acted by ADP and inhibited by GTP. Next is oxidative deamination. Oxidative deamination is the liberation of free ammonia from the amino group of amino acids coupled with oxidation. The site of oxidative deamination is mostly in liver and the kidney. This oxidative deamination will provide NH3 for urea synthesis and key alpha keto acids for the variety of reactions including energy generations. This is the oxidation of glutamate by glutamate by GDH. A L-glutamate on reaction gives alpha imminoglutamate. This on further with the GDH it gives alpha ketoglutamate. Next is the non-oxidative deamination. This is the next oxidative, next type of deamination reaction. In this, serine, threonine and homocerine on D 
on the presence of enzyme dehydratase it gives the respective keto acids next is the amino acid disulfurase sulfurase in this cysteine and homocysteine undergo deamination process coupled with uh, desulfurhydration to give keto acids for example cysteine on desulfurhydrase it combines with deamination reaction and gives the pyruvate deamination of histidine histidine on histidase gives urocodinate next we see urea cycle the cycle is also known as krebs encyclated urea cycle as ornithine is the first member of the reaction sequence it is also called as ornithine cycle so there are different names for urea cycles they are krebs cycle ornithine cycle urea cycle and encyclated urea cycle the two nitrogen atoms of urea are derived from two different sources one from ammonia the other from the aspartic acid this is the uh, structure of urea molecule it contains two nitrogen uh, two nh2 group and one carbon group next is uh, there are different types of steps in urea cycle there are, there are formation of carbomyl phosphate formation of citrulline formation of arginosuccinate formation of arginine formation of urea next is this are this is the cycle of urea in this 2 atp plus hco3 on uh, with ammonia gives carbomyl phosphate plus 2 adp plus phosphate in this citrulline citrulline is converted into citrulline and the in combination with aspartate aspartate it forms arginosuccinate this arginosuccinate by the release of fumarate it gives arginine arginine on reaction gives arginine and arginine in reaction gives ordinary this cycle occurs in the mitochondria the regulation of urea cycle is done during starvation the activity of urea cycle enzymes is elevated to meet the increased rate of protein catabolism the major regulatory step is catalyzed by cps1 that is nothing but carbomyl phosphate synthetase 1 where the positive effector is n acetyl glutamate next are the, the next the due to urea cycle there are different types of disorders occurs there are deficiency of any of the urea cycle enzymes would result in hyperammonemia if block occur in one of the earlier steps the condition is more severe since ammonia itself accumulate if deficiency occurs in later enzymes this result in accumulation of other intermediates which are less toxic and hence symptoms are less the accumulation of ammonia in blood is normally less than 50 mg per dl and the body fluid result in toxic symptoms brain is very sensitive to ammonia a child may be put on the low protein diet and frequently small feeds are given since citrullina is present in significant quantity in milk breast milk is to is to be avoided in citrullinema thank you for listening